All right, so going into um, back into the drawings, we're going to finish out chapter um, uh, chapter two. Well, we're going to make a good dent in chapter two. I would say finish is going to be kind of a, uh, maybe a tall order. Um, so looking again, wherever I can see symmetry, wherever I can utilize um, some of that geometry, uh, I'm going to. So just real quick on uh, 213 and make sure that I'm not getting out of sequence here. Um, pretty much same thing. We're going to draw half. Choices, do I include the fillets uh, or the, yeah, the fillets in the, uh, the sketch or do I make them as separate features? Either way, you're going to end up with geometry. On the one side, it's a little bit easier to, um, to create the feature fillet. And the only real rule is feature fillets are last. And um, one of the reasons is that fillets aren't typically toleranced and uh, dimensioned in the, uh, the same way um, that I would for the you know, overall size. And um, if you happen to grab the edge of a fillet to dimension to some other piece of geometry and that fillet says um, is uh, 120 or 130 instead of an eighth of an inch, you're potentially shifting your geometry. So in workflow and company standards, some companies will allow it. Other companies, me, will say, I want to see all of your chamfers and I want to see all of your fillets at the very end. All right, so any of the feature fillets that you create will be the last geometry that you put in into your, um, uh, into your model. And then if you're including it in the, um, in the sketch, then you have to put the um, the extra eye on it as to what kind of effect, um, you know, potentially where the, the tolerances will fall out. So, let's see, I did not pull it up on my other screen, so I'm going to shift back and forth, five by three and a half. And because we're using symmetry, I'm going to go right into center line, vertical, and infinite length. So, Symmetry and revolves um, are just kind of an automatic. And I do that mainly because um, it will find uh, it will find the geometry, it'll find the mirror lines um, much faster than uh, if I don't include them. And then I, it puts me in the mindset. I know that I'm going to uh, to mirror. I know I'm going to um, to generate that geometry. So 3.5 and then in the other uh, corner let's see two and a half by two in the center. All right so again if I'm in between the center line and the object I have the half dimension or radial dimension if this was a revolve and if I go to the opposite side then I get the, uh, the diameter or the full dimension. And that one picked, so no, that's not what I wanted. So escape out of one of those. So since the center line was pre-selected and I already applied it, it was, uh, it was looking for something else. All right, so one and a half, um, one inch to center. So in this case, uh, I would pick either the object or if I wanted to stay with that capability, I would still go between the, uh, the center line and my object and just make it one inch. All right, so I get down towards the end of the sketch. I have one piece. I think I have everything in. It, it should be obviously or kind of obvious that I need a dimension, but if I grab that, um, that blue endpoint or I grab the line, Sometimes objects don't move. Endpoints uh, will typically give you a better result in uh, what's going on with the um, uh, with the build. And do not see anything for that depth. So now there's another one of those that um, if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't give us a dimension or I can't uh, I'm not seeing the dimension. Your best guess. So I'm going to go with, um, my first instinct is one inch, so I'm going to go with 1.25. And we'll see how it looks. Pardon? Oh, back up. 
one inch. Uh, seeing no, I'm not seeing it from the, the line up. So there's no there's no extension line across this this so bottom. Oh, uh, I thought it looked a little closer, so I was going 1.125. So your choice. We're gonna we're gonna see when those uh, when those circles come out. Um, hopefully that'll uh, that'll tell. All right. So uh, at this point, would um, like to to see you getting comfortable with uh, multiple features. Um, so I didn't look at the thickness. 0.75. And then going back into the uh, the sketch, so we'll save. All right. So in this case, I did not put in the center line. We know that the uh, the two holes are pretty much a mirror: 0.75 by 0.75, and then 1.25 down. Um, so if I went with a a shorter center line, and I decide I need it after the fact. We've been just going ahead and mirror, but I can also select the uh, circle, control select the center line, control select another circle, and it will give me symmetry. So when I set that for symmetry, now I can check for symmetry that when I move one, they both move. So you're not locked into having to mirror if you generated geometry and it you know didn't pick it up right away that um, that there was some symmetry going on there then um, um, you can always go back and, um, and get it later. So one of the things that with that pre-select that I noticed, uh, okay, well, I need that value then. Uh, let's see, three at one inch. So those are all going to be equal. One of the things that I noticed is that um, I had the center point. I was dragging that center point along, around, and when I put in the, uh, the dimension, and went to the edge, uh, it jumped to uh, to the center point. So if I go over to the leaders, I don't see the max min center condition on that dimension. One's not going to hurt anything, but if it's my workflow, my best practice to have those circles uh, be able to go to max min conditions, I'm going to go back and pick the perimeter. Value is going to be the same. But now when I go to the leaders, I have an arc condition and what that gives me the ability to do is what is the greatest distance what is the minimum distance and what is the center distance all right so if I was reverse engineering you brought me a broken part and said I can't find this anywhere I need you to reverse engineer this and, and make me one rather than um, uh, calculating the center I can uh, chances are if it's broke it's deformed it's uh, ob rounded is you know something something happened. So I'm going to assume the original design had basic fractional or basic metric dimensions and tolerances in it. So if I can get those values, then I can take direct measurements off of the edge to the edge of a hole and put that value in uh, as, uh, as a, um, uh, a dimension number without having to calculate the center. All right, and then it puts it back in that um, I make one, we put it on, it's off by a little bit, then, um, then we can go back and, and make those adjustments. I don't get that ability if I go from center point to another object. So perimeter to perimeter, or from, um, uh, from perimeter to, uh, to an edge is going to be my preference. All right, so if you're looking for that arc condition, or in certain cases, arc conditions, then um, it has to be dimension to the um, uh, to the perimeter to uh, to get those. And then that one is across the flat. So design intent says that it will always be across that flat. I can make it coincident. And then movement-wise. I thought I made it uh, coincident. Oh, I drew it before I put in the center line, so I did not infer coincidence. So just grabbing that center point, moving it around, seeing how it works, and then coming back to the center line, I get that little yellow dot, 
that says coincident, when I drop it, it's going to go uh, to coincident to the center line as well. So there's times where I, I'm going to, I'm going to try to drag first to get it into position. And then if it, if it uh, can't resolve, can't uh, solve the, um, um, the, um, the relation that I'm looking for, then I will go back and do the select control select. Features extrude cut through all or up to next. And then we have a couple of fillets. So one, two, three, four, and they're all 0.25. So it does look closer to, to one inch. That was kind of why I dropped in the construction line, is to kind of get a scale reference on that, uh, on that number. <clears throat> so in this case, instead of looking for the, uh, the little pop-up, and, well, that wasn't quite the pop-up I was thinking of. Um, looking in the pop-up on the fillet selection, I'm just going to select the four, go into fillet, and hit 0.25, and go ahead and select. All right, so on this dimension, the 1.125, uh, the discussion really kind of comes back to would I rather have this too deep or too shallow? What is, where is this fitting? And if I was going to err on the side of uh, tab A into slot, uh, slot B, then having this a little deep may be preferable to having it uh, too shallow. All right, so just by double clicking on the sketch, and there's uh, another place where my fingers were ahead of my mouth, uh, double clicking on the sketch, brings up the dimensions and then I can highlight that dimension and here's another case where let's go ahead and put a, a marker of some kind and then I will also this one is set for mark for drawing so when I did the uh, the reset on Tuesday because my files uh, locations were all over the place previous versions 2015 SolidWorks 2016 SolidWorks I'm now back to everything being marked for the drawing so I'm kind of out of my sequence on um, how those are going to um, to be affected. All right. And still need to gather up all of the chapter one, and this goes to 213. So symmetry is something that you can use um, pretty effectively to, um, you know, if you draw, draw the half and uh, can get the rest of the geometry out of it, we're, we're ahead of the game. Yes? Sometimes select, shift select doesn't say anything. It can. Shift select is usually um, everything in between, but I don't um, I don't normally use um, uh, don't use the shift. We can try it. We'll we'll do um, uh, make it a point to hit shift select and see if uh, see if it's acting the same as control. Okay, so I think that accidentally yeah. Oh, that'd be interesting to to find out if there's another another way because. Um, some of the keyboards, when we were running the VMware on the Apple, and it has the command button instead of the control button, and you're okay. What do I what do I hit here? That's a little that's a little weird. <laughs> so it'd be nice to have some other options. Um, so for the uh, the star spacer here with the um, uh, kind of the rectangular shape, yes, there's symmetry, but I don't know that I'm going to even bother with the uh, the center lines on this one. Um, I can still do the um, the multiple features, uh, not really nesting the interior slot, but uh, let's see, we're in millimeters, 150 by 80. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And I'll pull apart metric. And you know, at some point you'll uh, you'll experiment with the um, different planes. So you know, start picking uh, maybe I'll draw on the top plane. Chapter three is really where you're gonna have more. Uh, ability to make some of those decisions and, and pick out um, the different geometries that would be better to start on a different plane. So I switched over to rectangle type center. Um, I believe it is A. Hitting A inside of the property manager will cycle you through. So if you picked um, the center rectangle and you really wanted the corner rectangle, hitting A a couple times will, will send it through. Uh, or selecting in the uh, the box, and I'm going to tell this to go from corner to corner. So I said the numbers, and now I've pretty much forgotten them. So I think it was 150 by 80. 
All right, so if I'm going to stay with my, um, my uh, feature fillets, then thickness is 7.5. And I want this one to go away from me for no good reason. All right, so I can toggle that direction at the feature wherever you see the little box with the square around it as opposed to nothing around it. These are going to act as toggles. So do I want it to come towards me? Go away. And that could be just it's going to fit into the assembly better. It makes more sense from a manufacturing standpoint to have it going, going that other direction. All right, open the sketch. And I believe we had two slots, and the slots are... Uh, 55 off of center and 20 off of center. All right, so if I use the center point straight slot twice, maybe, we'll have something that looks like that. And we'll go from that one to 55. And from that one to 20, and they should automatically be symmetrical. All right, and then you got to be care kind of careful because when you pick a slot, it is uh, picking the full, all of the geometry that was created. So in this case, rather than trying to relate them equal, I'm just going to put separate dimensions because, well, we'll take a look at it. Um, Radius of 10 in four places. So let's put that one on. All right, so I think I'm selecting a radius. I think I'm selecting, a, or I'm sorry, a, uh, an arc. And I think I've selected another arc. Be careful with the make slot fixed, making the slots equal because all of the geometry, make a slot equal says make all of the geometry in those slots equal. Uh, co radial, no. Tangent, no. Concentric, no. Equal. Okay, so as long as I was able to select the arcs individually and get that geometry in, um, that looks like it's going to work. All right, but I don't just want to grab that first one that says make slots equal. Otherwise, it would try to make 255 or 110 inch wide or 110 millimeter wide or 40 millimeter wide and end up with a um, uh, end up with a uh, an overdefined sketch. So trimming out the uh, the slots, I don't really need to. We're going to extrude cut. It's going to be a through all. It sees the intersection and takes me to selected contours. And I can pick the contours. Uh, what I'd be interested in seeing is can I, I'm sorry, pick the regions. Uh, what happens if I pick the contours? All right, so instead of picking one, two, three, four, five regions, if I pick the two contours, it should have the same net effect. And I don't know why that looks a little big, but I guess not. All right, and then the 20 millimeter chamfers. So in this case, I will go with chamfer. And keep in mind that 2017 has some uh, new chamfers where we'll, we can switch. Um, switch back and forth. So offsets, face-to-face, uh, -face, distance. Traditionally, uh, chamfer has just been chamfer. Okay. Oh, and then I did want to select one more. So when I select that edge, ah, it's not giving me the uh, like the radius tool to pick all of them. So that's okay. Right, so I could have done a sketch chamfer and achieved the same thing. Um, it's just kind of making uh, making those decisions as you go. Okay, so 14, and we'll close a couple. Okay, so closing those, and then we get to one that's a little more complicated. So. 2-15, we have some patterns, we have some offsets. Um, really, it's, um, you know, I guess there's a few kind of inferred items on here, but, um, you know, kind of see what, uh, what plays out. So one of them would be this 20, kind of looks like the extension line goes on up to this edge. And then we're 20 to the, uh, to the arcs. 
Um, looking at the intersections, this is going to be another good case that I will probably end up putting these uh, exterior and interior fillets. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I'll probably just make those a feature fillet and not worry so much about um, getting them in inside of the uh, the sketch. All right, so that is a millimeter. File new, part metric, and um, you know I guess it's more out of habit, but it's it's still a good habit that um, uh, whichever corner. I think it's um, just kind of a natural tendency to start drawing to the to the right. If we drew this to the left, it's not going to um, uh, to be that big of a deal. All right, so whatever makes sense or is going to uh, to help with the uh, the assembly, that's what we would do. All right, so this one I'm going to go right to that transition if I can find it to the continuous arc, and I didn't make that big enough, but I got it in there. All right, and we can pull this that way a little bit and that that way a little bit and it will come back to me, hopefully. All right, so let's just work on one piece. I'm not gonna go into the, the rest of the geometry just yet. 155, 110, and then radius of 50, and we have a height of 30 and a distance of 60. So we'll see how that massages our, our number in. All right, so to the intersection, so let's take a look at this real quick. To the intersection from this line to what would be the, um, uh, the virtual, all right, to our virtual sharp. Well, we don't have a virtual sharp because we're gonna leave that corner there. I'm not going to put the fillet in. So I can go directly to that object and get the line at 30. All right, so that gets my basic shapes in place. The inside then, um, those fillets, well, since I'm doing the other fillets, I guess I'm not uh, too worried about it. So we'll come up and over. That looks like it's going to be a continuous uh, arc. Maybe not. Um, can't really tell where that one ends, so I don't trust it enough to infer. And in this case, it's showing me the angle. It's showing me the vertical, but they're both white background. So even if I drop it there, it's not going to apply. It's not going to infer that that, that is a vertical relation. Um, that, on the other hand, horizontal and tangent, we're going to get those. The vertical in white just says that I'm going to be able to drop that line um, in in place. So my select control select, let's try the shift select. So holding down the shift button, it does work. So um, let's see, that is going to be concentric. Ah, well, since they're tangent and they're along the same line, uh, unsolvable or complex. So control Z, and we won't go that route. <laughs> So mainly because they're on the same line and this is tangent. Well, okay, angular, 90 degrees, um, sharing the same center point and pretty much uh, inferred the same center point. We'll see if, um, uh, see if it'll take the dimension. So I don't know if my logic is, um, is playing out there or not, but it went to 30. And let's see, is that, no, it picked up the 30. All right, and then the last one would be to go to, we have 20, 30, and 30. So we'll put in one more 30. And that one was already because I stayed collinear. Oh, I didn't pick the right one. There we go, between the outside and the inside. Oh, that was 20. Okay, I guess I had 30 on the brain. So if we're doing the, uh, the feature fillets, I have enough geometry. I'm going to do the pattern separate still. Um, the hole, yeah, we could do all the holes in, um, in one group. We're probably getting, we're probably close enough to do a, um, a hole wizard. 
So maybe this pattern will do a, um, a whole wizard item so we can get that introduction. And uh, so let's go ahead and give this a thickness of um, a five. And just because I can, I'll send it the opposite way. So picking up the uh, the sketch again for the uh, the large hole, 30 millimeters. Set the dimension, um, 30 off of the edge. The question is, let's see, 20. I can um, I can kind of see. The question is, would I want this to always be centered? And if I did, then I would select the midpoint, control select, and make those items vertical. All right, so now I don't need a dimension. If I go change the 60 millimeter from over here to um, 65 to 70, this is always going to stay centered on that, on that boss. As this, just like this is going to stretch, just like these items are going to stretch and shrink together. So let's go ahead and extrude cut that, and then we'll do that as an example. So through all. All right, so if I go back to my what if scenario, we make a design revision and say this needs to go to 80, which will be kind of exaggerated. And I changed it out of uh, double clicking the, uh, the feature. So when I rebuild, still centered and everything moved with it. That is a predictable result. Um, if it did anything else, uh, then I would be going back, okay, what was my design intent and how do I fulfill that? So back to 60 and it updates. So one of the things with the uh, the whole wizard then, and this will be kind of a um, a simple um, uh, example, is that pre-select the face. I'm big on pre-selecting anyway, uh, but whole wizard will ask you if you want a 3D sketch. And anytime you see the words 3D sketch, at least for the, the near term, um, stay away from the 3D sketches. All right, we have a, a time and a place for those um, uh, 3D sketches, but it's not now. So when I pick a whole wizard, um, this the advantage of the whole wizard is right now this is going to be a simple hole. But what if I decided I needed it to be counterboard or countersunk or tapped? Because I chose the whole wizard, I can switch seamlessly between those items and the database will pick up correct geometry. All right, so um, we'll do the example. This is... Um, uh, diameter of 7 by uh, by 12. So the difference here is that I'm going to tell it that it is ANSI metric. It is a drill size. It is, if I can scroll down here, 7 millimeters. Its in condition is through all. And at the very bottom there are no near side or far side countersinks. And then we have to go to a second tab that is its position. All right, so when I position the uh, the first hole, we go into select, and this is kind of the um, uh, the the point where the linear pattern doesn't have the issue, but the circular pattern where it puts the the point at the center of the pattern, because I'm using the point to define this uh, hole location, that's where we're accumulating that. Uh, 13th or whatever hole we would be getting. So um, just be aware that we're setting these uh, these points. Um, distance is 15, so I'm going to treat it just as if it was the uh, the hole. And uh, when we do the uh, the lace gasket, I'm going to take a different strategy, and we'll we'll show what happens with that uh, that circular pattern. So this being 20, I can either dimension it or I could relate it to this edge. The danger of relating it to that edge is I don't know that if that's just a lightning hole uh, for clearance, if something actually has to go through there. And this hole pattern probably has a higher priority than a relief. So 20 millimeters will stay on that uh, dimension. And then we're going to highlight the point, go into the linear sketch pattern, and now it's picking up. Uh, we had uh, six times 20. Seven times, oh, it was seven, seven times diameter of 12. Six times 20 millimeters. Okay, I read that backwards. 
All right, so let's not go that many. Let's go six. And the distance spacing is 20 millimeters. And yes, I would like it to dimension the X spacing. All right, and the six, oh, and the six was the number of, of holes, not the number of instances. So display instance count, yes. That looks a little bit closer. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I can um, accept my linear sketch pattern. And it found the instance, it put the dimension in. So got something that came in fully defined. So I'm going to go back to the type. And since I was wondering what we were going to do with a, um, a 7 millimeter, we'll go ahead and change it over to 12 millimeter and then accept the, the, the whole pattern. All right. So let's go ahead and put the fillets in and then we'll make a few changes. All right, so here's another case where selecting everything, probably not as desirable as going through and finding the five items that I really need. Uh, we'll go into fillet, and we're given a radius of something. Nope. Then it's your choice. So based on the relation to the circles and that I don't see a note that says all radiuses are six millimeters, they're now six millimeters. My, my guess. If you made them something different, that's fine. All right. So advantage of the um, so five millimeter thickness is not really that, uh, that big for a thread call out. But let's go back into the feature and I decide that um, I want this to be a threaded hole. And so we're still in ANSI metric, bottom, uh, tapped, and I want to put an M12 by 1.25 in there. I tell it to show me the, um, the cosmetic thread. We can set a thread class, um, near side and far side countersinks. Probably don't have room for all of that, so we'll just go ahead and put it in. The difference is now that I see the, uh, the, um, uh, the tap, tap drill and then the circle around the outside, that is the cosmetic thread for the major diameter of of my uh, of the um, of the tapped hole. So let's go back to the view. That really didn't do what I wanted it to, but basically we're looking at that dash dash line is giving me information about how it's going to, to be tapped. Oh, and then um, forgot the insides. So since the outsides were. Just like the rest of our geometry, getting back into the fillet is right click, edit feature, and then I can continue to add items. And we'll see how that looks in going into the corner. And so that one actually looks a little bit smaller. I like that one should have been 12, but we're going to stay consistent. All right, so say, any questions on the whole wizard? We'll, we'll do a lot more hole wizard items. There's there's times where you'll be sketching along and, oh, yeah, I put the holes in as, as sketch. And most of the time it's not going to matter. Uh, but there are going to be times where you don't know if it's a countersink. You don't know if it's a tapped hole. Which side in your assembly is, do I assemble it from front to back, back to front? And then you realize, oh, I, I'm really going to have to assemble this from back to front. I need to reverse my tapped holes make them countersunk holes, and I need to take my countersunk holes make them tapped holes in the various parts as we go through the assembly process. And I can do that a lot easier with the hole wizard than, than setting all those parameters myself. All right. So um, the worst, worst case um, on all of these decisions is I set a dimension, I set a relation, and I find out later on that making those adjustments that, uh, for instance, that top hole uh, needed to stay 30 millimeters off the edge. I can go take that relation out, put it in the 30 millimeter, and it's a minor inconvenience to go back and do it. But if it's, if it's the di design intent is that it's always centered, then it's always centered. All right, we'll get the um, part metric and then the lace gasket. Okay, so everybody's favorite um, lace gasket. 
So we were talking about it before class, and um, the previous um, three videos all use the uh, the same strategy, and I will detail that strategy for you. Uh, but then I'm going to take a, uh, a U-turn and try a different strategy, all right? Because uh, just because that um, you know that uh, those previous videos they all worked and they're pretty efficient doesn't mean that there might not be a better way. So looking at this, I have arc to arc and arc to arc and a circle. So my geometry um, in my my first choice, my looking at this and saying what kind of pattern would I want to generate. My first choice is to to generate that um, that shape. So um, I see the bolt circle and I want a bolt circle in there or a base circle. And I'm going to set that for construction. So I think we've done this a couple of, uh, of other times, but there is no construction circle. There is no center line circle, if that even makes a center, center circle or whatever we would call it. So we draw the circle and then we convert it to its construction um, geometry. So since um, these, uh, these center points for these arcs that I'm going to generate are on the um, 160 diameter, we'll go ahead and put that in. All right, so the uh, the circle would be pretty straightforward. We'll just um, um, you know we just put it in, uh, relate it vertical, and then go back through the um, through the mix. So let's let's look at the uh, the different type. Well, we've done the tangent arc, and tangent arc requires an endpoint, and I don't have any endpoints. So I'll do one center point arc, or well, we've got two. I'll do two two center point arcs and two three point arcs. Well, then we'll have endpoints. So we'll do one of each. <laughs> I'm overthinking it again. All right, so I'm looking for that quadrant. So as you drag over any circle, you're going to get the quadrant, its center point. And those visual clues mean that I can come up, see in the little yellow boxes that I'm going to be coincident, that I'm going to be vertical. And then my center point arc looks something like that. Um, center point arcs do not always go the correct direction in which case you kind of keep dragging until you get a desired result. So if I started out going this way, I would bring it back through and just kind of keep keep um, keep moving until it uh, uh, it got uh, got to where I wanted it. All right, so the other side of it, and it's gotten better, so I don't uh, have as many issues as I as I once did. And then those two, because they are forming a circle, um, I can make them co-radial. No. <laughs> All right. So once those are co-radial, they're not going to act like symmetric or anything, but they will share a common dimension. So uh, that was interesting. Oh, I got. I still had the um, the center the center point selected or the end point selected. All right. So we'll try that again on the arc. And um, those were radius of 20. <clears throat> All right, so the other types of arcs then were the tangent arc requires an endpoint. And so I can come off of any endpoint and generate the tangent arc. The three point arc then requires that I sketch something that's close. Anytime you see a dash, dash, dash line, means that it's waiting for you to show it what you are expecting the arc to look like. And then those were also 20 and those were 30. So they flatten those out a little bit. And then I can set both of those equal. And we don't need one quite that long. And as soon as I drag it, because this was a tangent arc, it's assured to be tangent. Because this was a three-point arc, it's almost assured that it won't be tangent. <laughs> so we're going to control select. And that is going to not pick up tangency. All right, select, select. Oh, there it is, tangency. I'm looking right at it. All right, and then to finish this out, Pretty much my left to right selection will go into the circular sketch pattern, and we are going to end up with 12 of these. 
Curious. Cool. Yep. So that begin construction circle, I don't have the option for construction. Um, it should be over on the uh, the left. Any circle that you draw. No, it's there, but it's not letting me select it. The is the circle highlighted, or is it still? Well, yeah, it's there. Okay, so if I draw it first, and then. Yeah, make sure that you have the circle highlighted. Um, if you've gotten out of it or you've clicked anywhere else, yeah. then then it uh, should show up under the options. Yeah, the options. So okay. You're, you're saying that the outside you're using center point arc, and the inside interior you're using three point, or you want to use them? They're all arcs. At the end of the end of the day, they're all arcs. But you want tangent over. Whichever point. one makes sense to you. I'm just kind of illustrating that you could use all all three styles. But the center point arc is going to require that you pick that center point, generate whatever. Um, typically, you're not going to make circles co-radial inside of a sketch because you're basically duplicating entities. And then the tangent arc, the advantage here is, yes, I would probably prefer the tangent arc because I get that relation automatically. The three-point arc didn't give me that. I had to apply it. I had to do the, the selection to make it work. All right. And then connecting the dots, we go to coincident and keep our fingers crossed, go to coincident. And then same thing is because I connected the dots, I am not assured tangency and I am not assured tangency. I have to apply those. All right, and then because it's a pattern, I didn't tell it to do anything. We have, oh, maybe not that one. So this is the case where any other center point, I watch that grow or shrink, drag back to the center, my construction circle, and let it apply it. All right, so that's the geometry that I saw. And I'm going to save this as my A, uh, A version of, uh, of 16. All right, so coming up with another strategy, when you first look at this, the tendency is to want to draw circles and pattern the circles, and then you end up doing a lot of trimming, and it gets kind of weird from there. So I'm going to kick this out. Actually, it could have stayed in that one. Um, yeah, why don't, we, why don't we just stay in that one? Considering I didn't give it the A designation, I thought it was. All right, so that was my preliminary. I'm just going to hide. Uh, do I want to hide or suppress? Yeah, we can hide. All right, so the difference between hide and suppress. Um, hide says I don't want to see it, and I get one, uh, one kind of uh, icon. And then when we show... If I suppress, it grays it out completely and treats it as if it's not even there. All right, so I can toggle between um, the, the suppression, just like I can toggle between hide. It's what is my intent. If it's something that in the case of a feature um, that I'm creating or I'm doing a what if scenario for another feature, I would have to suppress the previous feature. Otherwise, I am uh, going to generate errors uh, potentially generate errors. So probably suppress is more at the feature level or more at the uh, component level in the assemblies than it is in, in um, geometry. All right, so going into the sketch, same basic um, process. Uh, since it's still highlighted there, we'll go into for construction. Set the dimension at 160. And then the, um, the question that I always pose myself just because I've always done it that previous way what other ways are available and in the last uh, version of the software the latest update of the software have they come up with a better way or can I come up with a better way so there's the uh, the 30 oh sorry was it uh, a radius of 20 so that would be 40 on the diameter and here's one of those instances since the drawing that we take it off of is saying that it is a radius of 20. I would jump over into my leaders and switch to a radial dimension, even though it's a circle. Keep it consistent. Anybody that comes back and has, um, has this piece of paper and is saying, oh, well, you know, that's a, a diameter showing a diameter of 40. Oh, yeah, radius of 20. Well, I'd rather just look at that and say, yeah, it's a radius of 20. And then if I have to change it and we determine, well, then I can always go back and change it. All right, so the question then is, what happens if I still stay with the circular sketch pattern and I pattern 12 of those? 
and they almost touch. Wow. I was kind of hoping they would intersect. <laughs> Intersections would have been nice and nice and clean in that um, uh, I would have ended up with a, um, uh, a vertex there, an intersection that I could have gone back and said, fill it this and give me everything that I need. So I'm, uh, I'm not feeling as warm and fuzzy as I, uh, as I was about uh, 30 seconds ago. So if I'm going to stay with the circles, um, you know, drawing the arcs, um, we can go that route. My strategy is I'm, I'm thinking contours and regions. What's going to give me contours and regions? All right, so I'm, I don't want to say that I'm purposely making this more complicated than it needs to be, but it looks like I'm headed down that path to painting myself into a nice little corner. All right, so um, we had the radius of 30, which would give me a diameter of 60. So a large circle and tangency. So a diameter and two tangents should be able to calculate the, uh, the center point. Okay, now I'm just getting button happy. So circle, circle, tan. I don't know where that one went. Okay, so tangent. Let's do a control C and a control V. So Windows copy and paste. Um, not much different than just going ahead and drawing another circle, but uh, let's see, I want those to be equal. And then. See if I can identify the tangency because I wasn't seeing it last couple of times. All right, so we had 160. Oh, my pattern slipped, so I need to do that um, little pattern thing. Get it back to a location. All right, and then since we were having fun with um, with those, let's go back into the circular pattern and 12 of those as well. Nice. I like it. All right, so here's one of those cases I don't have anything to do with the center points, right? There's not much I can do with the center points. So let's make one tangent, make one tangent, and it pulls it pulls it back in. All right, in that whole mess <laughs> that I've just kind of created, I still don't want to trim. I look at this and it's like, yeah, that's kind of complicated. I mean, it's, you know, it's... Like I said, Spirograph, I, I looked up one on Amazon. They're still available. I really want to get one. I think it's on my uh, Christmas wish list and ask Santa Claus for it. Um, and, uh, you know, start start drawing patterns again. So at this point, let's see what happens. Extrude. And the trick is that I'm already in contours and regions. So I want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm expecting 24, 9, 10. Let me get back to looking at it. 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I think that was a contour, and apparently I... All right, so all regions. Take that. <laughs> all right, so probably the um, the most bizarre sketch, but out of all of that information, if you can pick out the uh, the items that are really usable, I think it's interesting that on the uh, the double click, it's only showing me the one. You're going, no way, do I want to show you all of that again? Um, that if you can pick out the usable information in those lines, that is just as valid as doing that circular sketch pattern with just this segment, this segment, this segment, this segment. In the four segments. So you know, again, not not right and wrong, just different. Just that it is um, it has picked up a, a different strategy. Let's see. So did I tell it that it was seven and a half, or did I just pick a number? Nope, I left it at the default. All right, so seven seven point five. All right. So the um, the next question is, I I certainly wouldn't go into the um, uh, the multi-bodies or, you know, probably probably would not be in the multi-bodies with, uh, with this strategy. 
Right. So again, there's some other decisions that come along that said, um, we're calling this a gasket. I wouldn't end up with this interior. So let's go back to the, um, to the sketch. I really wouldn't end up with this interior unless there was another level or there was something going on in the middle. I really don't see this piece floating as far as a gasket. I would say that a shaft with um, clearance comes through there or a water port or some kind of port comes through there. Um, so that is an opening and then this outside shape. All right, so just however you interpret it, I'm, you know, that's, that's the way that I'm interpreting it. So in that case, I'm going to go back to the front plane. Uh, we'll open up a sketch, and I really don't want to generate all of this again. So right-clicking on one of the edges, we have select tangency, we have select loop, or we may also have select chain if it is sketch geometry. So if I go with the loop, I run a chance that it will go up or it will go out. So in this case, I went up, and then this would be the out. All right, tangency would be the, uh, the same thing. So let me escape out of that. Right click, select tangency. Tangency probably makes more sense than loop um, for that uh, geometry. Now that I've got it, what do I do with it? I want to convert all of that edge geometry into my sketch. Find it, make it usable. All right, so now we're to the point that I can uh, pick up the, uh, the center slot. And we'll put a dimension. Um, they were 40 and radius of 10. So we'll put the 10 on there. And from the center out, And then the circle was, so it was 50. So I would say prior to the last couple years, I would have always trimmed. In the last couple, three, five years, I hardly ever trimmed. All right, so again, it's what makes sense and, and how you're going to go about the geometry but I don't need to trim any of this out. We go back into the extrude and I want to end up with that, uh, that edge. So my design intent is that, is this a merged result? Is this uh, something that's a uh, pressed in insert? Um, the previous videos had, uh, maybe I have um, a copper gasket with felt or rubber uh, applied to it, uh, laminated to it or, um, uh, you know, something along those lines, those different materials. Um, so those are some of the decisions that I have to make. But to end up with that ledge, I'm going to to have um, have some geometry there. So even if uh, we were at seven and a half, if I go to seven on the um, on the uh, distance, um, if this is a separate piece, then it's unchecked merge result. If it's one piece, it's left merge. 90, I'll say 95% of the time, you're going to merge the result. When you don't, this is when you're going to get the second solid body. Oh, I guess it would help if I actually picked a region. There we go. And so now it's thinking about it. And it says, now I have body one, boss extrude one, and boss extrude two. Those are each bodies. All right, so uh, where this is an advantage, and I try to point this out pretty regularly, is maybe this is a purchase part. I know it's in two or three pieces. Maybe we even have to do some assembly internally with, within our company, but I get a box of these parts and I'm putting it together, and I don't want to treat it as a separate part number because it is one purchase part number that we order regularly. So why would I want to track five separate pieces that I'm really not as concerned with? Because I can still come in here and say this is uh, my my gasket dash um, 9531, and this is gasket piece um, 9532, whatever. And those are ways of tracking it. And this piece is made out of. 
um, I was looking for, okay, we'll go 60, 61. And the outside is made out of rubber. And we can track those materials. Now, this material does not get used because that's kind of the global material. The solid bodies each get their own material. And when we expand those out, we can see that material underneath the solid body. So make this as complicated or as simple as you can manage it. If it makes sense to go down this path and to uh, to build these uh, build these geometries that way, then that's fine. All right, and then I, I overlooked the hole. Um, last thing I really want to do is put that hole in there, but um, we'll go back in. And one of the the downsides to picking uh, rubber with the um, uh, with the black material is uh, sketching on top of it and finding that geometry. So there we go. Nope, missed. Concentric. And no, I do not want a dimension between them, so we'll escape out of that. And then that dimension was 20. And one more pattern. Uh, let's see. 12 and um, and then the, the choice is dimension the radius dimension the spacing it's still one of those cases where I have enough geometry that I can do the select and make those uh, concentric and then extrude cut the holes through and then since I have that separate geometry this may be one of those times where I would grab and re um, reorder my geometry so that everything associated with the outer ring comes first everything with the inner comes second and then if this gets complicated enough i'm going to right click add a new folder and give it a name and obviously not enough in here but i can use folders to organize my geometry in relation to solid bodies or into just groups of geometry so again, how do you manage the complexity once you generate it? Yeah, what's your question? So normally, for this particular condition, would you have done the holes of the extrude cut or part of the sketch? Part of the, probably part of the sketch. Like the previous videos, I just included the whole, the four arcs, and that was all one pattern. So instead of having the multiple instance counts, because um, you know even on this one, there are the, the, the sketches, there's instance count number one, um, there should be two more, uh, well, at least one more instance count in this group because I did this circular sketch pattern first and then I did these afterwards. It would make sense that I would see two, um, two instance counts. So these numbers that are popping up, they are there for a reason. And uh, as complicated as this, I'm not going to double click on that and change it. <laughs> but if I decided that my instance count needed to go up to, and this also leads into a discussion of global variables that maybe I set a global variable that says this instance count goes from um, uh, all of these dimensions have an instance count set to the global variable. And if I need to change it, I change one global variable and all of these numbers go from 12 to 14 to 18. Now, will it retain? That's a that's another uh, issue is will it rebuild build correctly when I make those variable changes, but it's a, a strategy that I could um, adopt and, and attempt. So there's times where we just you know got to take the plunge and and see what it does. All right, so a different way of doing the uh, the lace gasket. Oops, let me do that. That one. Okay, getting button happy again. Let's see, we've got those. All right, so that's going to be yeah, pretty much Tuesday. Um, another one with the uh, the table. Okay, we're in pretty good shape. All right, so we'll finish up on the uh, the slot plate. Uh, one of the things that was determined with the slot plate is this looks like it comes down and makes a little bit of a jog to make this go fully defined. Pick one of these points and don't make it tangent. So either this endpoint or this connection endpoint, one of those isn't going to be tangent. 
So now I don't remember which one I decided. If that one was less of a jog or that one was more of a jog. But you get to take your pick. All right, so also, nope, in inch. Hard inch fractional, front plane, sketch, center line, horizontal, infinite length. Set the position, go back to select. Um, I guess I'll go off of the uh, the outside. Up over. Do not want that to be a tangent arc. I really would like that to be a, um, a three point because I can halfway get it get it into position. And then um, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, infer the tangency. So coming off of that inference line, it showed me the uh, the tangent box, and then it showed up in the existing relations. So those are just little blinks of, of information that are going by that um, hardly even register other than this is what I'm expecting that I will get. So then going over to the center point arc, going up to that position, uh, let's see, we need half of one. Okay, so that's my um, uh, my mess as I chose to uh, to create it. So let's see, radius of 1.2, and then they share the uh, the same circle. So I would either have to do the math or include the slot. So uh, let's see, I, I'll probably include the slot rather than do the math. So that being the case, into the slot tool. And then uh, I'm not sure where that one's lining, but you know it's kind of the, the same issue once you put one center line on top of another. Uh, main difference here is going to be that I can drag, um, I can drag or I can dimension the, the whole slot. And we had um, radius of 60, so I guess I better put um, something usable here. Oh, sorry, radius of 0.6. All right, that makes better sense. I'm still thinking metric all of a sudden. So 0.6 and 1.25 to the center. Um, if we go ahead with our fillet in this case, since there's two fillets, I don't know where that, that comfortable zone is where I stop doing sketch fillets. Um, you know, in this case where they're they're tied together. Um, you know, it probably is, but somewhere after I get over maybe three, four, five, six uh, fillets inside of a sketch, I'm just going to leave vertexes and go right to the, the fillet feature. So entity to fillet, again, if you for some reason do not have a vertex, maybe these lines stop short and we just didn't care to connect them, I can always go back to the previous and select the two objects. All right, so objects that don't exactly connect, I can still pick those geometries and it will create the fillet. Okay, and then the arc and the arc, those become concentric. Uh, let's see, what did we have for dimension? Um, oh, two and a half for both slots. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Um, so that is a case where I can select, um, control select the slots, make equal, and all of the geometry in the slot then becomes becomes equal. Let's see, radius of three. Um, and then they gave that interesting 0.95. All right, so assuming that this is concentric, and we have a two inch so I want to see what the result of um, of selecting the object is. Well, I'm almost thinking it would have been easier to leave that one tangent. Oh, I did leave that one tangent. It would have been easier to make that one the jog and leave that one tangent since we're not given a value. 
All right, so at the end of the arc, 0.95, still more interesting results. All right, so where's my uh, 1.75 from center back? Okay, so based on that, without um, too much more information, I think that's the way I'm going to go is to take that tangency out, make that tangent instead. See if we can pull the, uh, the center point. And five to the, oh, I went the wrong way. So that kind of makes sense. Okay, so looking at it on the um, on the bottom and then re reversing it to the other side, 0.95 from the uh, from the step back. All right, so that looks a little bit closer. We had two inches, and the two inches is staying in a horizontal, not following the line, so that's good. And then, oh, the 3.75. That still doesn't look like it. Oh, from the uh, the center of the slot. Okay, so make sure that that stayed. That stayed. We had the two and a half. And two inches to center, so that one comes up on center. So we'll go vertical. I don't think that did it. <laughs> so one of those has to be a little bit off. So now I'm not happy with my tangencies again. All right, so if I switch it back, a little bit of angle to it, and it went fully defined. All right, so until I find out otherwise, uh, that's my geometry. So in this case, for the uh, for the mirror, I'm going to right-click, and here is the select chain. So where before in the features, we got loop and tangency. Everything that's connected to that, uh, that geometry, right button on the object, select chain. It will find its way around till there is a gap or, um, or gaps. And... Um, uh, cannot continue with the um, with the chain. Control selecting the uh, the center line since we have a center line for the slot and a center line for the slot. Mirror the entities. And I'm I fight hard to get that um, that pre mirror fully defined. Then when it mirrors, I'm pretty much assured that it's going to be fully defined. Right. Rare instances there'll be something that it doesn't like or picks out, but for the most part, we're there. All right, questions? 17. All right.